Hey everyone, my name is Daquan Johnson. I'm an MD-PhD student, and today I'm talking about study habits. This topic was requested on a previous comment on the previous video, talking about whether or not I can talk about study habits for MD-PhD students and what a candidate should have coming into the program. So thinking before getting into an MD-PhD program, we know that if you wanna be competitive, you have to have the right GPA. So you should be aiming for those four O's as much as you can um, to be as competitive as possible. And so that means to get those high grades, you have to make sure you're studying properly. And the sad answer to this question though, is that your studying is gonna depend on your major. So if you are an engineering major, that's more problem solving based and more critical thinking, your studying tactics will be very different than if you are a Russian literature major or Spanish major or English major or a bio major. So your study techniques will have to be tailored to your courses to make sure that you are doing the best in those courses, getting those Bs, getting those As to make sure you're as competitive as possible. Um, so the only thing I can say for that, if you want to have a generalizable answer for studying while you're in undergraduate degree, is make sure you figure out what you learn best with. So figure out whether or not you're an auditory learner, figure out whether or not you're a visual learner, figure out whether or not you're a kinesthetic learner, um, whether or not you learn best through practice problems or whether or not you learn best through listening to lecture or best through reading. And so these are all things you want to kind of start thinking about and probing as you are tailoring your study skills, as you're going through your classes, so you can start understanding the psychology of you as you study. Because the more you understand yourself and how you retain information, the better it will be once you get into your MD-PhD program to figure out which study techniques will work best as you're studying for a more high volume state when you're in medical school. So the other part you want to think about as an undergraduate student is get used to following a schedule. Um, so you should get used to trying to do a little bit of work every single day. And so it means every single day, yes, as, med as undergraduate students, we tend to procrastinate a lot, but try to get to the habit of not procrastinating as often. One, it reduces your stress while you're an undergraduate student because you never get overloaded with work. And then two is just building good, healthy habits because once you get into your MD-PhD program, particularly your medical school program, it will be much easier and it's much more sustainable to be able to do a little bit of work every single day consistently. So get into the habit of making sure that your study space is your study space. When you sit down, you get to study mode. And also get used to working with um, colleagues. So one of the big things in your MD-PhD program you'll learn is that you learn a lot better when you're working with people who are just as motivated. So try to form study groups, try to practice, trying to figure out if you can quiz each other and learn from your peers because that'll be a key um, resource when you get into your MD-PhD programs of learning from your peers because a lot of the course curriculums are geared towards us teaching ourselves. And so if you can start learning from your peers and learning on your own, you'll be well ahead of the curve. And so that's the one part about dealing with your curriculum and making sure your GPA is strong. Now, when we're talking about studying, one of the things that will probably get you most prepared for studying for medical school, at least, um, is studying for your MCAT. So studying for the MCAT is the closest thing you will do for studying for a medical school exam because you will have this one standardized exam that everyone will take and that you have so many different resources that you can pull from. You can pull from your own personal class notes. You can pull from um, purchase practice test material. You can buy materials from the AMC. Um, you can do all sorts of things to study for this one exam. There's no one right way to study. There's many people who've taken the exam. We've all studied different ways. Some of us taken prep courses, some of us studied on our own. And for each person, they figured out what they need to do to do well. And so this studying for the MCAT will be your insight to whether or not can you sit down? Can you give yourself a schedule? Can you complete that schedule and then further perform on this multiple choice exam? And so studying for this exam is going to be really important because not every person will study the same, but you'll still get into the understanding of how do you retain high volume information. Um, it's very few exams out there where you are pulling from so many different topics like the MCAT. You're studying general biology, cell biology, organic chemistry, general chemistry, physics. Uh, you're testing your reading comprehension. You're looking at your ability to analyze data, sociology, psychology. And so you have all these things being pulled in and so you have to get used to trying to figure out how do I retain all this information for this really long exam. And so make sure you take studying for the MCAT seriously. Make sure that you feel completely prepared when you're taking the exam and that you made sure that you understood why did you choose the study styles you picked. 
so that you know that you're predominantly um, auditory learners so if you make sure that you're retaining information by talking to yourself or while conversing with people or listening to different lectures from a prep course or whether or not you're pretty much a practice problem person where you picked out all the questions from Kaplan te test material or from all the practice exams and you took a lot of them over and over again. So these are key things to understand for your study habits, making sure that you can organize a schedule, whether or not it's going to be a month of studying, or if you're like me, eight months of studying, and you stick to that schedule. So that's kind of the pre-MD-PhD going into MD-PhD. So going into the MD-PhD program, the things I would say that you have to have into your study repertoire coming in is one, ways that you know how to commit information to memory. Because in medical school, you're trying to commit a lot of information to memory so you can have instant recall and usability on your exams. Second thing is something where you know that is efficient. Because of the high volume of information that you're given in medical school particularly, you have to be able to conquer most of the material in a reasonable amount of time so that you can keep on pace with the course and also still be successful on your exam. The third thing you wanna make sure you're doing is that you understand how you learn best. Because in medical school, like I said, you're teaching yourself a lot of information. And so therefore, if you understand how you learn best, once you get into medical school and you start experimenting with different things, trust me, you'll get tons of advice in terms of how to study properly for the courses. Um, but you have to wind up picking up what's best for you. And out of your classmates, you probably won't be, everyone will not be studying the same, I guarantee you. Some people have to be in lecture every single day. Some people will only watch recordings. Some people will not watch recordings at all and only look at the slides. So you'll have to figure out, um, based on your learning styles, which of these study tactics will most likely work for you. And so that's what I say going into it. Now, as an MD-PhD student, like I said in the previous video, most of the time, if you look at the MD-PhD, traditional MD-PhD curriculum, we spend two years in medical school, four years in grad school, and then two years finishing up our MD. And so it means at any given time, we tend to feel more like just a medical student or just a graduate student and then just a medical student again. And so likewise, our study habits will change. So in medical school, where we're focused more on high volume and high repetition, we'll make sure that in our study schedules, that we're seeing the information as many times as possible before we get to that next exam. And so when you're studying for medical school in particular, you want to keep a few things in mind. You want to keep in mind the fact that the curriculum tends to be pretty stable and that you can utilize your upperclassmen to understand, well, what does the class look like? What do the exams typically look like? What are the best resources you found within your class that work really well? So making sure you use people who are experienced and have gone through the same thing you've gone through, kind of give you insight in terms of preparing for your medical school coursework. The second thing is, after you start getting the hang of things, you're trying to keep the exam in mind. So every time you're looking at new information, you're looking at new lectures, looking at new material that's presented to you, you're gonna make sure that you can keep in mind, how would my professors test this? What will this look like in question format? How, will, um, how would I examine this information without the students understood it? Because once you have the exam in mind, it's much, more e it's much easier for you to kind of tailor your understanding, tailor your studying to the high value, high yield information. And so you wanna make sure you're keeping the exam in mind because at the end of the day, as a medical professional, there'll be lots of exams lots of exams. Even after you finish school, you'll still be examined, you'll still have to have relicensing exams, so the exams will never stop. So you wanna make sure that every time you're getting new information, you're keeping the exam in mind. The other thing you wanna keep in mind is can you start fitting things into a bigger picture? Can you take information and details that are given to you and fit them into context? So like I said, in a lot of our upper, our graduate education and our medical school education, information is a lot of times very detail focused. Our lectures will be very detail focused, but can you start sending them into a greater context? Because once you're able to do that and once you're able to connect those things to greater context into the bigger picture, it becomes much easier for recall. The last thing you want to kind of figure out is that you want to start working towards trying to do active recall with spaced repetition. There are many tools for you to use this. Many people may have heard of the app, the flashcard app called Anki or yeah, Anki, most people call it. Um, and that's a, a sophisticated way of using tools where you have 
programmed space repetition that call that forces you to have active recall of information that you put on those flashcards. But there's other ways of doing that too. For me personally, I don't like using empty flashcards. So the way I do that is I create myself summary sheets of all my lectures. And what I'll do is based on all the learning objectives or based on all the overall topics I divide my lectures into, I can make myself a free response quiz and say that, well, what were all the topics covered in this lecture? Can I give this lecture as I'm teaching the course? That way I give myself an active recall of space repetition every so often before the exam that I get used to pulling that information from my mind so that I can know that I understand it and I can use the information. So that active recall and space repetition is important to master and understand, especially as a medical student. And even in other things where you're trying to commit things to memory. And then the last thing, like I said before, even for undergrad, it does not change in graduate school or medical school. You want to work with your classmates. You want to work together. You're not in competition. At the end of the day, yes, we are ranked to get into our residencies and our other positions. However, it makes it so much easier to work together than it is to work alone. Because again, you have multiple perspectives, multiple people pouring in into the perspective, making it much easier to learn information, much easier to quiz each other, and much easier to see the information from different perspectives, even your better understanding of the work. Um, and then for the graduate school part, where the volume is very different, you have a lot more of the critical thinking aspects, you have a lot more of the detail-oriented aspects. So studying for graduate school will more likely be very similar to studying in undergrad. Um, it's just that it's a lot more detail-oriented, a lot more creative thinking, a lot more critical thinking. So now not only do you have to know the details and understand why the details are there, but now you have to be able to extrapolate, create conclusions, so you need that comes with practice. So get used to just reading articles, making sure you're brushing up on your primary literature skills, that you can look at data, come up with conclusions, state the, the trends and the correlations that you see within the data, and get used to kind of going to the next step. Well, what is the question that naturally follows? So every time you read a paper now, just make sure as you're reading them, but well, what is the next question that follows? Get used to asking that question. Get used to saying, well, is this data valid? What does this data tell me? Do I agree with what the author is saying to me? Um, is this data convincing? Um, so these are the things you want to start thinking about as a graduate student and as you're getting ready for your courses where they will be asking these same questions. They will give you data points and you'll have to look at the data, interpret the data, and then sometimes take a next step. What are the next following questions? What are the aims that are being addressed? What are the things, how you want to approach this problem? So these are the ways you're going to start kind of starting to see that your tailoring and your studying styles will change. Um, where in medical school, your studying style may be much more consistent because if you fall out of that consistency, you get a buildup of work. Where in graduate school, you may have a little bit more leniency because you only have lectures every other day. And you may only have six lectures on your exam compared to 46 on your exam in medical school. So your study style as an MD-PhD student will change depending on your, your stage and your career. However, the core things will remain having a consistent study schedule, knowing your learning style, and making sure that you are doing the first thing with keeping the exam at, in mind, knowing how you're gonna be tested. So hopefully that helps. If there are any other questions, you need any other clarification, drop them down in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to answer those questions. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video.